My name is uh, Caroline Njuki. I am an Assistant General Secretary with the uh, General Board of Global Ministries and I've been asked to share with you some of the issues of aging in Africa. My responsibilities here cover Africa so I have some knowledge about issues that are happening today. Aging in Africa is an old phenomena, but it also is a new uh, phenomena. Uh, Ellen Badudoku Areji at the University of Ghana expressed it very well. She says that in Africa, we are faced with a historical version of what age is, means. However, this historical version does not fit in today's reality. She describes the historical version as we all know it, that the elderly held authority, they were in power, and they were in charge. And this is still true in some families. But her research in Ghana, and this can be applied elsewhere, shows that the families that still wield authority and power are very few and that the elderly comprise of the larger statistics within those who are poor. Now aging can be uh, looked at in a number of ways and uh, for the purpose of this uh, conversation I divided uh, uh, aging in and the issues relating to different categories. The first one is displacement, uh, whether it is internally displaced or outside. And when this happens, it really disrupts more those who are aging. They're infirm, it's difficult for them to adjust, and usually they do not get first access to health or any of the services because they are older. Secondly, migration. Migration has really changed how Africa relates to aging. Within Africa itself, there is the rural to urban migration, which leaves most of the elderly back in the villages and in the villages they have to address all that needs to go on by themselves oftentimes without any help and of course the services in the um, rural areas are not all that good in the first place so you find that elderly people are having to fend for themselves with very few resources then there is the elderly who migrate to the urban areas themselves. They face discrimination, uh, they are sometimes looked down at, sometimes they are pushed around. They do not have the security of uh, the family or the community and have to fend for themselves they are called name. For example, in Swahili Muse refers to an elderly person in historically uh, in a respected way. Right now, if somebody says, oh yeah, this Muse, this or this Muse, that it is demeaning. Uh, it is looking at somebody who is useless, who is redundant, who is not wanted. And you will find that the younger people in urban areas where Swahili is spoken, they refer to Rumuze uh, in a despairing way. The other part of migration that affects the elderly is a lot of young people are leaving their countries in Africa and migrating to the West. They are in France, they are in Great Britain, they are in the United States, they are in Germany, they are all over and they have left aging uh, parents back. And in conversations with some of the families who live outside, you see that they're at, at a loss as to how to look after their aging parents. 
it's difficult to bring them over because of visa issues. Also, they're worried about displacing them because when they come here, they will be in the home for um, a month or two months. They will be well looked after. But you can imagine a person who has community coming to live with somebody in an, an apartment in the, either in France or somewhere, being left in that place with everything by themselves and half the time they don't have the, lang the language and they're left there from morning to evening where the young person who has invited the parents is tired, is ready to go to sleep and then go back to work and so this person is facing so much isolation that they rather go back and yet when they are back <clears throat> and this, the children try to remit funds to help them the funds sometimes don't even reach the parents. So again, that is an issue of um, migration. Then there is the issue of uh, HIV and AIDS. Africa has almost lost a generation. And so you find that you have the generation of the younger uh, people and the elderly. The elderly have been left, especially grandmothers, uh, to look after and bring up children. And this is not the way it used to be. So you find that the grandmothers are struggling with very, very resource, little resources um, to look after uh, grandchildren, adopted children, because they are the only people who are available to bring this. And there is no backup, no resources, no help for this aging uh, population. Then there is the age, the issue of discrimination. Um, I could also call it um, uh, a social issue where the family or the village wants to take away resources that belong to the elderly. This particularly refers to the elderly widows or elderly women where their um, people want to take their property. So they are going to find ways of running them out of the village. Um, uh, Ellen refers to this in uh, Ghana. Uh, also research in Tanzania uh, shows that in 2009, 2,585 killings of widows took place. Uh, because they were accused of witchcraft. Of course, a lot of times they have to find a reason for either killing or running the elderly out. So when it comes to women, uh, somebody will start a rumor, um, that old woman is the one who is killing all the children. And when this happens, people are up in arms and many times either the older person has to run away or risk uh, being killed. And these are some of the issues that arise as I look at aging. There's also the, the, the issue of violence, lack of education. Because of lack of education, the elderly did not receive a lot of education. Uh, so they do not have anything to fall back onto. And so social structure is uh, changing. It used to be uh, the social structure used to take care of the elderly. Right now, because of the changing environment, the dynamics are changing. I um, also wanted to talk about climate change. Um, climate change is also changing the lives of the elderly. They have further to walk to look for firewood. They have further to walk to look for water. Uh, they are also vulnerable to the environment when it, when there are hurricanes, uh, when there are earthquakes, uh, when there is drought. The elderly are more vulnerable. And as you see, people who are running away from the drought, uh, maybe you have seen some of the images of uh, Somalia, you see that the young and the older are more vulnerable to the uh, environment, uh, environmental change.
First of all, as I research issues on elderly in Africa, I find it difficult to access information. Uh, there are bits and pieces found, um, located in something to do with human rights or climate change or HIV and AIDS. There is no standing body that I have found that I can go to right away as going to uh, address the issues of aging. Especially for Africa. In Africa, we are all our people. Uh, we pass on the traditions orally. Uh, so there hasn't been too much research that I can find that anybody can go to straight away. So the open-ended working group can uh, um, sponsor or recommend uh, that a study on aging in Africa uh, be conducted and out of the outcome of this research there can be recommendations which can be found either on a we, uh, UN website in one area on Africa or um, um, action global action on aging can house this but we need to find a single place where people can go and find information on aging and uh, I think also aging needs to be uh, elevated so that it is uh, included in the MDGs uh, it is crucial um, for example, as soon as we are born, we start to age. And we are always looking at aging as something down there, but we will wake up to find that we are the aged people that they are talking about. I think if aging could be part of an everyday conversation, within schools, within universities, within uh, policy makers, because even the policy makers are looking at aging as there. But aging is not there, it is with us, whether you were just born today or have been around for 60 years. And I think as we talk about aging and aging being part of us every day, we will include it in our everyday living and start to plan and uh, uh, arrange for the care for ourselves as aging people uh, as part of life uh, and I think that's um, what it should be. Um, aging also should be um, addressed uh, by instruments whether it is UN instruments or protocols that are not only addressing the issue as debates and recommendations. We have protection on the books for uh, abuse and human rights and whatever, but until these become active and come out of the books, then we can do all the protocols and recommendations, but they're not helpful. And so I think the working group needs to find ways of making uh, the issues around aging and elderly active by monitoring and also making sure that um, there is implementation and also documenting. How do we document how many widows were run out or killed or run out of a certain country this week, this month? And I think what has brought about change in HIV and AIDS, for example, is documentation, talking about the issue and bringing it forward so that everybody is aware of the issue. I think that would be so important for um, the working group. Also, I think there need to be uh, a group again, a committee that is monitoring uh, countries and reporting on elder abuse, neglect, 
isolation so that uh, somebody out there, whether it is the UN or the government, can uh, uh, take uh, uh, a proactive role in uh, protecting the, the elderly. And um, I think that is um, some of what I think might be considered by the working group.